So today I want to talk about how to build a very basic web server with Node. This is just, you're building a website, you're building an API, you just want to be able to test a fetch call, an Ajax call from your web, website, or you want to be able to get some data down to your web page, and you just need to quickly and easily build something that's going to act like a web server that's going to respond to an HTTP request and send something back. That's what this is. Now, I'm assuming that you understand the basics of JavaScript. Uh, if you haven't done any JavaScript before, I've got a playlist called uh, JavaScript from the Start. I've got a link to that down in the description. That'll take you through all the fundamentals that you need to know about JavaScript. So, assuming that you understand the basics of JavaScript, we're going to build a very quick and easy web server. So, first of all, we're going to create, or we can use const, uh, a variable called HTTP and this is going to bring in the node package called HTTP. Now this is really the crux of everything. This is the thi one thing that we need to have. Node has this built-in library called HTTP that we're bringing in, we're importing that to use on the page. This is what's going to build our web server and let us have something that's running on our computer that's listening for the requests. So we'll do that and then we're going to create the server and that's a really easy command to remember just create server we're going to put some stuff inside of there in just a moment and then at the very bottom once you have the server we're going to give it the listen command listen command as you can see it can take a whole bunch of things what we want to put in there most of all is the port number what port number do we want our server to be listening on now, a default web server is going to be listening on port 80 or port 8080. Um, so we're just going to pick a, a random number, 1234. This is going to be the port number that we're going to use just for testing purposes. Then when our web page does a fetch call to the server, this is the port number we're going to have to include. And then we're going to have a callback function here, which is going to do something once the listening command has started. So we're just going to do console.log listening on port 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, that's the basic structure of a web server. Believe it or not, that's, that's it. Now inside of here, the create server, this is going to get a function and it's going to take two parameters. It's going to be given two things by the create server command. So we put a function inside of here. It could be a named function if you want to structure it that way. I'm just going to make it an anonymous function because it only gets called the one time. And inside of here, rec and res. So the request object, when somebody from a web page or from when a web page makes a request to our server, this is the request object. So it's going to have the query string, anything that's uploaded, uh, the method, the body of the request, all that stuff is going to be inside of this request object. The response object, that's the second thing. This is what we're going to be sending back to the browser. All right, so we're going to only deal with the response. I'm not going to worry about what the request is. I'm just going to assume that I'm using this page, this web server page, as a test for downloading some data just to make sure that my uh, client side API is working. So I'm going to create a few headers here, first of all. So content type, it's going to be my first header. It takes, this set header command takes two things. The sort of the key and the value for each one of these. Uh, we're going to send back application slash JSON. Let's do that. We're going to send some JSON data back to the server. Now to avoid any cores issues, I'm going to add the access control allow origin header and we're going to set that to anything there we go so we're setting the content type as JSON and we're saying that requests are allowed to come to us from any browser from any domain whatsoever it doesn't matter where the original domain was we're going to allow the data to go to this place as well okay and right head is the last command that you do. So set header, you can do as many of those as you want. Right head, you only call one time, and it's at the very end of all of these things. It's the last one that you put in there, and it's just the status code. 
So HTTP 200 slash OK. That's the status code that we're sending back here. We're saying that, yep, everything's all good. Now, the very last command is our end command. Now we can write more content if we want. We can build up a big thing to send back. But like I said, I just want a simple basic thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a JavaScript object. We're going to stringify it and we're going to stuff it inside of here. And this command, this result.end or response.end command, this is the one that says, okay, everything's done. Everything's packaged. I'm sending it to the browser now and then I'm done. That's it. This is the last command that we need. So we're going to put our variable inside of here, data. This is what we're going to send to the client. All right, so we need to have some data. Let's, uh, let's do this. We'll say data object. We'll create an object that's got an ID. And the ID is going to be one, two, three. There's a name property, going to be Bob. And we'll have a property called uh, email. Bob at work.org. There we go. So there is our data object. Now, like I said, we need to stringify this to be able to send it back here. This has to be a string that's going back to the client. We can't send other data types. It must be a string. So we're going to say let data. That's our variable that we're sending back. Equal json.stringify and we're passing in data object and there we go done that is it this is all that we need to do then if you want this to be running let's open up our console here inside of here we're just going to run node and then the name of the file and we should see the listening on port 1234 there it is okay so that's working now we're going to jump over into the browser now this is on my computer that it's running. So localhost or 127.0.0.1, that is the domain name, the IP address that we're using right now. And then this is the port number, so 1234. So in my browser, if I go HTTP colon localhost colon 1234, that's the place that I'm sending the request to, and there's my response. If I inspect this. We'll go to the network, refresh this again. There we go. There's localhost. This is the request that we made. And here's the headers. You can see there's our status code 200. Access control allow origin. Yep, that came through just fine. And our content type application slash JSON. Preview. That's the data that we got back. It did come back as JSON, so it was interpreted as JSON. And the cool thing about this is any request sent on this port number right now to this basic server, it doesn't matter what I put here, does not matter, we get this. So that web server, that basic one that we've just built, is intercepting every single request that my browser sends out to localhost over port 1234, it's intercepting all those requests. It doesn't care right now. We haven't built any routing into our page to say, okay, if this is the URL, then this is what you send back. If this is the URL, this is what you send back. We're just saying anything that comes in on port 1234, send them this. And so that's what we've done, which is just create a very basic, simple web server so we can send back some data to make sure things are working. All right, so I hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I will be making more videos in the future about uh, more complex things about how to do routing and stuff like that. But for now, this is the basics. This will get you started. This will get you up and running. As always, thanks for watching.